Uh, yep, just out in the hall, there's a um, water dispenser, and over on the counter are some cups. Thank you. I don't know about over here, but it's pouring. Oh, it's coming this way. Then. Yeah. <laughs> it looks pretty dark out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got soaked pretty much. I was wondering, it looked like you had gotten. Yeah, I, I didn't know if that was occurring this, since we entered the building here. I thought my garden was present. Exactly. We were sitting out. We got here early, and we're sitting out in the parking lot. And the wind picks up, and it's blowing the sand devils off the big mound of sand down there. Looking around in the parking lot. Yes, I pulled in up there. We meet on top of it. <laughs> you already slept right in the middle yesterday. Jay gets here. Uh, I you said yeah. Jay gets here. They talk about the Sochi corner. But that didn't we went to the no. farm. Well, have you heard something? Maybe a non-public. I I didn't know that he was. Well, coming. maybe a non-public. Um, they may have talked about it in a public meeting because I missed part of the public meeting because I was out talking to um, Sadie Wells. We had to redo our presentation. Of, oh, a candidate. Oh, nice. Well, we did that in non-public. Oh, so looking good. Well, is that new? Well, we have something? we have two candidates we recommend. I don't know. I hope so. Uh, they both have experience. They both seem really decent. So. That's great. My wife, Elizabeth. Yes. Hello. This is for the Canyon people. Yeah. yeah, I got a nervous text from Nelly. Oh, yeah. Oh, it was like, boy, it was it was also interesting. I saw lightning and it started. I heard the door slam. Oh, so uh, I could tell him that, man, I can't. Yeah, the, the only thing I've heard is that some of the and I got an old phone day from Pat Lisa. Please text us your own. Oh, there it is. I'm like, well, that's a they store stuff. Well, this is going yeah. to be here. Yeah. 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 We, 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 we have several other places that go read them. We have a lot of them. It's on the map. Oh, great shed. Well, the great shed is exactly. Okay, so we can. You know, it was exactly the recommendation. So what I did is I went on the website. I got on this place. Can you move it up a little bit? Yeah. The banks so that the. Yeah, just so, well, that's right. actually that's better. Move it down because what I want to show is the contiguous territory. Right. At that point, and then we can zoom in to certain yeah, areas sure. too, if that would be helpful. Well, probably it won't be necessary. Just okay. to refresh. Talk about. It. Well, I'd like to call the meeting to order, and the first uh, order of business is to welcome the people from the Canaan Conservation Commission, and let you know. Uh, while you're here, I'm uh, on the board of directors of the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions, and one of our jobs supposedly is to contact the conservation commissions around the territory that we are on the conservation commission of and invite them to meet. So I sent letters to Canaan, to Grafton, to uh, Plainfield, to Springfield, to uh, Lebanon and to Hanover that all have properties that surround Enfield. And you, Mr. Shabbat, is that Shabbat, the way? Shabbat, Shabbat, you're in Canada, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you're the only one that answered. So that's how come you have the position of being here. And uh, that is something that we have all talked about. And the thing that I that we would like to try and bring up for discussion uh, as it can pertain to this. Can you move this down a little bit back here? No, the yeah. other way. So this is the Canaan Enfield line here. And you will see, uh, I'm sure you know, all of the contiguous areas that run off into it. Now the purple areas are the highest ranked habitat in New Hampshire, and the green areas are the highest ranked habitat in the biological region. So you see that there is a lot of contiguous habitat that goes from Enfield to Canaan, Canaan to Enfield. And the question uh, that we are interested in is to what extent uh, 
Canaan is, is knowledgeable of who owns this territory along here and what their interests are in conservation. That's one of the things you'd like to find out. The second thing, of course, is to what extent uh, we can cooperate in developing some kind of conservation program that extends beyond uh, the Enfield's border. Our wells that supply uh, the municipal water system for Enfield are located in Canaan on property that Enfield owns. But the major well, the biggest one here, the McConnell well, is uh, filled with alpha radiation and can't be used directly. It has to be diluted with water from the other three wells. So water conservation is also an issue that the conservation commissions are supposed to address. And the use of these lands to maintain aquifers and not to develop them is something that benefits everybody, whether they like wildlife or not. Everybody here in Enfield relies upon well water, whether they're on the municipal system or they're on their own system. And I assume that part of that is due to, or is, I said you guys get water from Canaan Lake, don't you? Right. Okay, so you're better off than us who wanted to make this try it. <laughs> so those are the basically the issues that we have thought of uh, trying to collaborate with Canaan's Conservation Commission on. And so I'd like to uh, open it up to you people to decide or to talk about how best to protect these habitats. And uh, also the fact that the Mascoma River drainage, which is you guys have a natural resources inventory. If you look on page, I think it's 78. Yes, 78. You'll see an outline there of the Mascoma watershed. There's something like uh, 124,000 acres in these communities, Dorchester, Canaan, Hanover, Orange, Enfield, Lebanon, that drain into the Mascoma River. Only 15,000 of them are conserved. So the, the problem of development in those other areas, foresting, uh, harvesting wood, uh, and so on, it results in water running off faster than it otherwise would. Uh, Canaan may be a little bit better off in Enfield, so the Mascoma River surrounds Enfield on three sides. And flooding is not a, an impossibility, even in uh, less watered areas. So, those are the three things that I had thought about, and if you have anything else to add, let's let's get to it. The interesting thing that you bring up is we started an initial mailing to select properties, um, and the initial target is actually been along West Forest Road. We've had two responses, neither of which is confirmed or Next, the fact that they may be interested in considering property. But that's been the bulk of where we started. We've only, at this point, only sent out, I believe, 15 letters total. We'll do another round come, come the fall. But that is one of the critical areas that we, that we identified as well. Um, I've actually had a conversation with one other landowner that's also in that, in that same stretch who has no interest. He's a Real estate investor has no interest in serving his land, but he would sell it if the price was right. But he's in that. Um, there's one critical property that the owner did not respond who owns most of the Lovejoy Brook. And you're familiar with, yeah, because as the stream goes, he owns, he also is for Vernier Solar. That's right on the cane and into the line. Right, exactly, exactly. And that purple uh, section, I think, right? Yeah. Kind of like, yeah. 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 And he, he did not respond, but uh, I think ultimately it'll be a part of the second mailing to see if we can get some kind of answer today, today. But we would love to work together, focus on that area, and see what we can accomplish because we identified that as one of the critical areas as well. Are there any uh, indications that these properties are actually being 
prepared for some kind of development? Not that we're aware of. Have you heard anything of the planning board side? Nothing. Uh, the only the only recent development is a uh, I say a fairly minor development, but it's on uh, it's on Goose Pond Road, Matt Dow's looking right at Goose Pond. Right. And, uh, uh, what is that? What is the building? Is that Bob 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 Bob. Yeah, yeah. So, as far as planning board goes, and I said I'm planning board too, as far as planning board goes, that's the only thing I've seen coming. And there's a lot of timbering going on this time of year there. We have not been out to those properties to see them of late, so I cannot comment on that. Oh, typically, it's done in the, typically, I would say it's done in the fall and the winter. We get notices from our town hall if it tends to cut, but I presume you guys get the same thing. Yeah, we have not seen anything in that area of late. Now, one of the things that that we have been thinking about doing is putting up a warrant article to allow uh, Enfield's Conservation Commission to acquire the uh, uh, current use fines that are put before. Have you guys thought about doing any of that? Shaman. We get a cap of five thousand dollars a year for the current exchange tax, and that, that was approved. And that cap was set by the select board back in the day. We have not approached the select board to see if we could get it changed. That may come to fruition. The current one of the current select board members who's been there forever does in fact retire. So your budget from the town of Canaan is five thousand maximum of five thousand. Our budget in the town of Canaan is zero. Oh. But from the from the change the land change use tax, we can get up to five thousand. Oh, so you do get money from yes. The, and yeah, we did that require a a, a warrant article or did they? That was, yeah, okay. it's a long while ago. So you're ahead yeah. of the time. It was in the eighties, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a long while before we showed up here. Okay. Well, that I wasn't around in the 80s, but I. Yeah. <laughs> but I think. Thanks, um, thanks Cody. Thanks for helping. I believe the NHACC released a report of all the towns that had gone through that process, and 5,000 seemed to be about average. Yeah, well, we'd what like people to, were getting. We'd like to get it, but not put it. Put it uh, no, cap. no cap. I know. <laughs> that would be because ideal. Grafton, Grafton doesn't have a cap. Yeah. Um, the other question is. Have you been in touch with the Upper Valley Land Trust or any of the groups that are interested in conserving land by, by purchasing? We have not had any specific, other than the fact that we, Alice and I uh, sit on the board of the Basketball and Conservation Commission, and we turned Fair Pond over to the Upper Valley Land Trust seven years ago. Um, you might want to speak up a little louder because Ms. Banker is trying to. Oh, sorry. You don't have, you don't have a microphone. And the masks kind of uh, the bubble thing. Well. Right, right. Sorry. Um, and excuse me, can we share the minutes so that they will have those too? Oh, absolutely. Right. We'll send you a copy of these minutes. Awesome. Right, but we're not aware of. Uh, I don't know if you've heard anything, but I'm not aware of any properties that are currently in discussion for conservation with. Upper Valley Land Trust at this point in town of Canaan, anyway. What would you say is the uh, real estate activity of Canaan? Are you seeing a lot of people moving in from out of the state or out of the yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm there? I'm hearing that too. Yeah, I'm here in Canaan. I'm in Florence. Yes, starting, right? Yeah, but we see it just and we live up on, on Sword Hill Road up above Goose Pond. And Three. I mean, there's not a lot of houses on that road, and in the last two years, almost a half dozen of them changed hands or, been, or new ones have been built just in that, just that small area. So, as opposed to the ones that are changing hands, what percentage do you think is building? That's interesting. I don't know. Do you? you know, on our street. On our street, yeah. Right. Um, do you have a comment on that? I, I, I don't know that I have a percentage. I know. I wouldn't say there's been an unusual amount of activity on development. In a lot of cases, there have been. What, what we've seen is people coming in subdivisions. 
ahead of building. But you know, we I mean we had one major subdivision on the front of the farms that we came in and realized that building the road that they were proposing to get to the lots was going to cost a ton and so did the So I I would I would not say the planning board has seen an unusual, you know, compared to previous years, um, amount of activity in terms of new construction. But because we don't have zoning, um, the construction piece of it doesn't doesn't necessarily have to come to us. So the planning board doesn't keep you informed of what's going on in that regard. We, if 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 somebody is looking to merge, subdivide. Um, you know that kind of activity that that has to come before us, but the actual construction once they've you know they've subdi subdivided into you know some number of lots, building on those lots, the only thing that, that we have some say about uh, largely is road construction, culverts, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, that that's basically the same situation, of course, with all conservation. You have copies of this. No, I'm talking about the planning. The planning board. Yeah. Right. Well, my point is we're always just an advisory body, we're not a regulatory body. Everybody knows that. My feeling is that there's always going to be turnover in the houses that are here. And that doesn't bother me because that land is already taken up. And in our case, it's been taken up for most of the farmland, and so there's very little food from an infield anymore. What concerns me is new construction. We have a proposal for a 230 acre major subdivision off of Block Haven Road that is in a prime wetland area at the end of the mud pond. You, you're yeah. well aware of that, right? So that actually extends into Canaan. <laughs> so those are the kind of things that we might be able to collaborate on and then draw the string around those people's necks. Yeah, there's an area, and I'm not sure whether it's actually in Canaan or in Enfield, but there's a place that I've known of for maybe 30 years where there's a rare orchid that grows right out near the pond. And there used to be sort of a trail with bits of lumber and stuff that you could Walk out. I don't know what what condition it's in. I haven't been there for a long time, but it's it's definitely habitat that the state uh, natural heritage bureau is interested in. And I'm pretty sure they would be displeased if somebody ruins that section of shoreline. Who is the developer? Do you know? Because I, 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 I don't remember. I may be missing something, but I don't remember. Anything. I just caught it in the, in the just now. I was wasn't aware of it until I saw it in the minutes for today's meeting. So Jerry found out about that. This guy, uh, yeah, that was news to me. Is it that White House with all the stuffed animals? Right yes, that's yes, Oscar yeah. or something or other. I'm trying to Kovac. Kovac. That's yeah. Kovac. Mr. Kovac is. The one who's put this proposal in. Is there are lots in Canaan that he wants to set about. I think if this is all on Enfield. Yeah, this is all on Enfield. But well, it's it's I right along the mud pond wetland area. Right. It's right along there. 230 acres extends into Canaan. But so right most of the, it is in Enfield. It's right close to Crystal Lake. Uh, it's okay. the, just across the road. The stream yeah. that runs through there and right. eventually ends up going into the Mascoma River. Is the drainage from Crystal Lake? Right, mud, mud, mud pond, yeah. Bro, yeah, yeah. whatever else it's called, Crystal Lake uh, Three, stream. Right, exactly. Right. I, I'd like to check with the planning board chairman um, in Canaan. At least my understanding would be if there is a subdivision of property, even even if it, even if all of the subdivision is in Enfield, if the property extends into Canaan, he ought to be coming before us too. I don't. Okay, well, that's something that we need to keep in touch with and try and get the powers that be in Canaan as well as Enfield aware of the fact that this is trampling on some pretty significant habitat. Uh, should we? Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Jerry. They just had a meeting, the people in Enfield and in Lebanon, discussing the necessity of preservation and protection of water sources. And since that particular territory eventually runs into the Mascoma River, which runs into Mascoma Lake, by developing those things, it seems to me they're being a bit hypocritical. On one hand, they're telling people we're going to preserve the water. On the other hand, we're going to build houses and septic systems and everything else right on top of it. So those are the kind of things to me that need to be brought up because they're inconsistent with what the jargon they're putting out is. Because now what's brought that committee about is cyanobacteria moves in Mascoma. Now, last year there was a, one in uh, Payne Street, wasn't there? Goose Pond has had a bundle of them. Yes. Even this year, that's had a yes. bundle. I've not heard of Canaan Street. Of course, the Walnut. Yet. No, I haven't heard of Canaan Street. As far as, I, as, far as I know for sure, this year we have not had a sign no. of. I remember it was last year, uh, I know a friend had said, you know, should you go in the water if there's a warning? And I would say no. I said, we, we did they, have. <laughs> nope, it's okay. We did have. Um, and I forget what it was, but it, it wasn't cyanobacteria, but it, but it, there was some something in the lake, in Canyon Street Lake, that closed the beach, town beach for a couple of days. Yeah. But the uh, committee is hoping to get representatives from the Canaan Conservation Commission on it too. It's a whole area to be concerned and be able to help each other. Right. How many other people besides those that are here on your conservation commission? One active member and one alter. So could you send me the names and addresses and emails of the people that are here so we can have it on our record? Absolutely. And I'll do the same for you. Absolutely. Should we just do a quick introduction? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Absolutely. So we can start uh, with the chairman. Bill Chabot. Like the for a period that may never terminate. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> at least my wife, <laughs> my wife Elizabeth, <laughs> equally elected. Equally elected. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm Thomas Opel. I sit on this and the planning board. Thomas Opel. Opel. Right. O P P E L. Okay. And I I sit on the conservation commission uh, appointed with some term, uh, and I I'm elected to the planning board. Oh, so you you're on the planning board as well as the county. Mm -hmm. That's yes, a very good liaison to have. We don't, <laughs> we don't have that here at yes yet. Anything. You should work on it. Yeah, it really is helpful. It is. Uh, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. I'm Alice Shorey. I'm an alternate. I've met you. Yes, I, now I recognize you with your mask on, I, but now I recognize your voice. You lead a lot of hikes around the countryside here. And I. Known Alice since oh, like 35 years ago, is yeah, Probably, yeah. Oh, more. Well, I only got yes. here 12 years ago, so these are <laughs> not faces that I immediately recognize. You're cool. longer than Cody. Cody. Yeah, <laughs> Cody Hussey. Um, moved here about two years ago. My my wife grew up in Canaan, uh, so we just bought a house on the east side of Canaan Street Lake and joined the Conservation Commission two years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just said it's it's really nice to see some of the younger generation on the conservation commission. I'm uh, trying to recruit more, but <laughs> there's always so many of us. We're trying to. Yeah, that's another thing. It, you know, we could we could also work together on this. Not, I mean, it's not rocket science, but it's it can be difficult. Yeah. I mean, if you know you know people from different towns, you know, just kind of yes, keep keep mentioning it. Yeah. Yeah. People from Canaan, so. In my sample, so I, I think that's yeah. a good idea. Yeah. Um, We're trying to get a uh, position called the trail master started here in Enfield that would be responsible for recruiting and supervising the maintenance of trails, of which we have a lot because our master plan group uh, was interested in trying to make uh, Enfield a recreational spot for people to come to uh, Parking availability in Enfield is done too good so that if they don't want to walk out here, they're going to have a hard time finding a place to park. 
But nevertheless, we've got some pretty good trails here that have been maintained by a former chair of this Conservation Commission, Alan Strickland, for many years. But he's aging on, he tells me, and uh, he is a necessary aid of uh, people to help him. So the idea of recruiting younger people is useful in that regard. The problem, of course, is that the younger people are all working eight hours a day, seven days a week or more, and the, consequently, the ability to get things done uh, is difficult when you don't have some old codger like myself around pushing <laughs> not them, but the administration and watching out for stuff like that. So we need a combination of both. Uh, I don't know how to encourage younger people get involved. Do you guys have any ideas? You picked our lucky stars when he showed up. <laughs> yes. That's definitely a challenge. I, I also sit on the board of the Northern Rail Trail and so I'm familiar with that field at Master Glen. Yeah. Great. Um, and it's the same way for that yeah. as well. I sit on the board of, you know, mostly 65 year old plus and all great people and I'm thankful for them, but I don't have an answer for you for that one. <laughs> I don't need that. We're always looking. Yeah. Anyway, we'll continue with the introductions. My name is sure. Jay. Uh, Jay Wellens. Uh, I've been on this committee for maybe 10 years, eight years, something like that. I've been in town for 35 years. And I live on the end uh, the Lebanon line uh, on the other end of Mascoma Lake. We have uh, our neighborhood has shorefront there. And, uh, yeah. I you do need some younger blood. Uh, I think it's important. And I guess we could share ideas, you know, some sort of marketing plan. Maybe we can come up with a shared marketing plan, some literature, something, some type, some type of newsletter that we can get out to prospective uh, people that might have time. I think if people realize, you know, it, it doesn't take a ton of time, even just to be a member. I mean, it's great to have time, but, you know, I was in it when I was working full time. Now I'm easing towards retirement. And only work like five hours a day. So I think it's commitment for us down to it. And we want to make a change. Cheryl? Shirley Green. I've been on the Conservation Commission since the early 2000s on the uh, Board of Crystal Lake Improvement Association for 25, 30 years, <laughs> and uh, New Hampshire Lakes Association for 19 years. and. I have been passionate about taking care of our watershed and an environment I hold out life. Really important. I'm Gerald Tice. I'm basically a neophyte as far as the rest of the members of the, of the Conservation Commission is concerned. But I became the chair because I'm the only one that isn't working. I retired. <laughs> I was a professor in the School of Medicine at the University of California where 46 years, and uh, California is falling into the cracks. So I decided when I was ready to retire, I wasn't going to stay there. But that's how I ended up in New Hampshire. There's uh, nine states that don't have state income tax. New Hampshire is the only one that has any decent scenery. So that's <laughs> why I came here. <laughs> so basically, uh, I think that you need to come up with a list of things that we can both attack from both sides of the border, so to speak, Britain, and uh, keep in touch with what see as obstacles in the form of uh, bureaucratic uh, agencies within our respective towns. The, uh, Enfield Thief CC says that it's your community, your vision, your voice. Now, the master plan has no legal authority. So it's a matter of convincing people that they need to consider land not so much as a monetary benefit, but as its habitat factor. And to that extent, we have we might discuss this later on, but I noticed the one thing on your agenda too is so you're putting together a letter 
Yeah, that's what I'm going to show you. Oh, right okay, now. great. So I was, that really piqued my interest. Other thing, while Jerry's digging that out, I think we started talking about because we've had a little bit of a an issue with a, a person that wants to develop land down on on, on George's pond. Uh, it's we feel a critical waterway. It is, um, but one thing we what we would like to do is talk about maybe developing a, a larger buffer for certain water areas. You know, I mean. The town has the right to, you know, vote in something if they wanted to. Do you guys have a, 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 any buffer regulations other than what the DES? Yeah. On Crystal Lake, you know, I mean, on uh, Cannon Street Lake, there's. See, DES let theirs go in the hopes that towns would, would take, take it upon themselves and even make it stronger. Yeah. Well, that was there, actually the, the legislature abdicated the responsibilities of setbacks to the communities. DES may have been consulted, but the legislature actually passed the rules that did that. And our community was unaware of that. So we've got a 51 foot setback against prime wetland. This prime wetland happens to be the largest in infield. It runs for eight miles. And it has very large aquifers. So that I didn't mean to interrupt. No, you're just enhancing it. And so I think as we develop a list, like talking about a list that we can work on, recruitment is one. I think maybe talk about a setback. You know, is 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 there a way that we can work together to to market it so that we'd have to have a vote, right? That would have to be a warrant. We'll go to a warrant article. Right. I mean, but you know, there are certain areas I I believe should the setback should be. Much more larger. Yes, well, that's what uh, in some places. Yeah, the the studies that have been done show that it takes at least a hundred feet to remove seventy percent of pollution coming down the land. This is done by the DES, by the University of Texas, University of New Hampshire. So fifty feet, okay. is just spit in the ocean. Turn but it do a damn thing. Right? And the people who lobby against this are the real estate agencies in this state. So we, I'm on the legislative committee, subcommittee of the New Hampshire Association of Conservation Commissions, and I'm interested in trying to get the association to pressure legislators to resist this nonsense that the real estate agents don't want. For example, in the sewage system, if you have a building permit that's 20 years old and you decide you want to raise, but it's less than 20 years old, you want to raise another house on that property, you don't even have to have your septic system reevaluated. That's the state's law, not ours, the state's law. So the real estate people lobby against all of the things that would improve the quality of septic system removal. And I've been working with uh, Mr. Green, uh, Shirley's husband, in Crystal Lake. And I've been sending water samples to the State Department of Public Health. And we have now found the uh, enterococcus in the water in front of homes who are on postage stamp lots. No chance for their, for their uh, effluent to be strained properly and probably very old septic systems. Public Health Department in New Hampshire considers enterococcus an indication of sewage contamination of water. Uh, they're not, it doesn't specifically point out humans, but it does it much better than E. coli or coliforms do. So that's the kind of thing we're trying to do to point out that Although these homes were built years ago and there's nothing much you can do about them, there are better septic systems that need, that need to be considered, first of all. And second of all, they need to start being concerned about when these camps, which were all occupied for a few months out of the year, are suddenly turned into year-round residents as they are around Crystal Lake and Mascoma Lake. Where they're now occupied with uh, a large family.